Welcome to another episode of SNG Weekly. And this week we're gonna show you uh, some different stuff. We got another communion bus to make. They've been very, very popular and uh, we're making one for a client in Germany, which is really cool. And he wants his out of latex, so we're kind of doing a special one. Uh, we're gonna be building the Mars Attacks model um, because we need to reshoot the footage we did for Martians Attacks SNG, the short film. Uh, because in my absent-mindedness, I changed the set <laughs> because we'd already shot stuff with the Eagle, which is behind me uh, in place being worked on in the JJ. And both of those got finished, as you know. Uh, and so there was no way to kind of put those back up there and get the lighting the same. So we're going to reshoot uh, the opening and I'm going to be working on the Martian or uh, Mars Attacks model. So you're going to see me working on that because that's actually going to be part of the movie. And it actually makes more sense. Mary's been saying this from the beginning. So we're going to be doing that. Um, I'm going to be showing you how to make uh, grass or foliage material from sawdust. Yeah, if you keep your sawdust clippings and you're into making uh, dioramas or slot car tracks or railroad tracks, I learned on the internet how to make your own foliage, which is really, really cool. I'm going to show you how that's done. Getting back to Martians Attacks SNG, next week we're going to be doing pickups and shooting. Uh, we're going to have Tom, or Model Man Tom, he's going to come here and help us shoot. Uh, and we're going to be doing things with the Martian, uh, actually building the puppet all the way through this time and finishing off some of the various things and shooting. Uh, because this week is going to be a busy week of kept catching up on our orders. We had uh, pointed ears to make, uh, Spock ears, uh, shadow boxes, Cochran's and of course the communion bus. So it's a, a busy week of just catch up. So let's get on with the show. So we're gonna open up a communion bus. Uh, for those of you who are familiar with what a communion bus is, it's not a way for you to put in your mouth, but rather the creature, alien, visitor, uh, non-human intelligence from Whitley Strieber's famous book, Communion, and we do make bust of it. Whitley is a close friend. I've known him for many, many, many years, and he gave us permission to make these. And we're the only ones who get to do it. So uh, the client decided that, uh, who's in Germany, uh, Kevin, hi Kevin, uh, that he wanted to have his from the original mold, the original sculpt, uh, not the clay pressed one, and he wanted it in latex. So we made him one in latex. And uh, of course, you know, you pour the latex in first. Uh, this is the polyurethane. This is the part that goes into the base. And uh, the polyurethane supports the latex, which is quite thick and probably didn't need it at all. But you can see this just wants to fall off. So we're looking uh, real good there. I think we're pretty much ready to pull this out, give it a little wiggle, make sure that there isn't anything that's uh, not set up, which is always my worry with working with latex. So I just kind of wiggle it like that, and it should come out just fine. And it did. And it's a beautiful thing. So uh, what's got to be done now, of course, is I have to trim this. Uh, wow, that really came out nice, didn't it, Mary? Absolutely. So somewhere around here, some of the sharp scissors, and we're just going to trim this. And then later, of course, I'm going to go over to the Dremel tool and uh, patch and fix and then paint with our special rubber cement paint. stabbing my own finger. That's pretty much good enough for now until I get in here and do all the final stuff. And then this fits and this. So that's how we get a bust. It's mail call! 
that guy, Harley? I used to love watching him. And we used to actually have a mail call, but we were starting to get lots of interesting things again in the mail. And this is from Mark Tyler, who I met a few years ago online uh, in the slot car forums, before, um, uh, right before Jilly got ill. And then, of course, I lost touch with him, and then I got back in the slot car forums recently because we were doing slot cars. And I reconnected with him, and he sent us a sample pack of some of the stuff he does. His company is called Immense Miniatures. And if you go to the link right here, you can go take a look at his stuff. Um, his wife and he both are artists and incredible sculptors. And his wife evidently sculpts what you're about to see. Um, and she sculpts it uh, quite large to begin with, at about this size, like that here. And then they scan the, uh, the pieces, which you can't possibly see until we get this under some light. So we're gonna open this up. But they scan them, and then, um, after they've been scanned, they shrink them down. So it's not a 3D printed thing, not really, because these are hand sculpted. Now, Mary, if you get in really close. Can take them out of the bag, please? Okay, so let's see here. You need to get down, uh, get some light on these so we can really see the detail in these heads. They're, they're incredible. I'll just sort of turn them. And I believe this is Jimmy Clark, uh, Jim Clark, and Dan Gurney, and I forget who else. He tells me in the note. These are beautifully done pieces for slot cars. I mean, look at the level of detail. And these tiny little sculptures. Amazing. And of course, here's the body, uh, which is designed, and you can see all the wrinkles and everything in there. Uh, incredible work. And of course, it's designed to hold the wheel and to sit down inside the slot car, very much like this over here. Like you see here. Now, these aren't marks. And he sent me a Jimmy Clark, so I can replace that with a, with a real Jimmy Clark. Uh, here's some more. Um, these are uh, railings. Uh, so if I order a bunch of these, and I probably will, we can put them along here and replace these and, and make it look like more stone. These are posts for railing. And I mean, the sculpture in this is just so precise and so nice. This is beautiful, beautiful work. Again, from Immense Miniatures. Uh, and we have uh, oh, uh, Jimmy Clark and Dan Gurney. Just incredible. Mark, uh, thanks so much. Thank you so much. And uh, you can be assured that we're going to be uh, customers of your work. Fantastic. Both you and your wife. Okay, and over here, uh, I've been saving my sawdust and plastic dust and stuff, and the reason I've been doing it is because I learned online that instead of buying uh, that flocking stuff that you can get from model railroading, you can actually take sawdust and green acrylic paint, which I'm going to make a little bit darker, uh, and put it on this, which stains it. You dry it out in a microwave or an oven, and it'll turn to powder again and you have the same stuff which you know this much in a plastic bag would be about seven dollars I just saved my sawdust so I want to do a test first to see if this works out the way they show after that you can come over here and uh, take these natural looking uh, weeds I found uh, in a field nearby here and we'll paint these first a darker color a little bit uh, and put some spray adhesive on and dip it in this stuff and we should have some fairly realistic looking trees so here we've got some uh, lovely green goo uh, sawdust and we're gonna put that on this paper plate here and put it in the oven and dry it out and turn it back into powder that's the theory and there we go uh, I've spread it out on some aluminum foil which makes more sense than the paper towel I think and now I'm gonna stick it in this lovely uh, air circulating oven rather than a microwave because if I stuck this in a microwave <laughs> with all this metal there'd be sparks we're gonna take this like that we're gonna crank up the, the 
the, to about 200 and turn this on and we will uh, take a look at this later. And here's our sawdust, uh, pretty well dried out and you can see how if it's clumpy like this, it'll just, now let me give you a better example. Here's some, some big clumps like this, which almost look like lichen, but see, they'll just powder right up again. So, uh, or you can leave it kind of, kind of clumpy. What I want to try now is just a quick experiment. I'm going to uh, break up some of this here and then put some spray adhesive on one of our, our weeds over there and see what we get. I got some spray adhesive on here. We'll see what happens. And of course, after that, I can also put more color uh, on the tree, uh, on the leaves, and kind of uh, airbrush it, if you will. Lighter, fall colors, whatever you want to do. But it certainly seems to work. Uh, this looks much better than those uh, ones you buy in the stores. And I learned this off the internet, of course. But uh, wow, how's that for a nice looking tree? And it just needs some uh, airbrushing and work on it, some different colors in it to really sell it. But it really, really does work. And the spray adhesive holds it really well. So. I think that's very successful for my first tree I've ever made. Uh, wow, cool. Oh, God. So these parts are supposed to fit together on this Martian. Oh, yes, we're building a Martian, but they don't really fit together. It's, it's, it's interesting. You'd think uh, with uh, Mobius, like with so many of their kits, things would just kind of melt together, and they're really not doing that. So we'll come back in a minute when they are. So they just they just have to be kind of, you know, you get them wet with the liquid glue, which is what you should be using. Now, if you're watching our show for the first time and you're interested in models and young or old, you, you might have thought that that tube glue was the stuff you're supposed to use. Wrong. Um, you can't do what I'm doing now with tube glue. And you can see how well that melt, melted. What happens is this stuff actually melts the plastic and binds it to itself. It makes a very, very good bond. And also, you'll find when a part doesn't fit, uh, even if there's a small bit of flash, this will melt the flash off and the part will just squish together. Now, I know I'm repeating things to all you experts out there, but this is just in case we've got new people on board uh, learning about this stuff. So, they don't really give you a procedure of which part should go to which first in relationship to the general assembly, so uh, I'm taking a, a leave of faith here that this is the way it's supposed to be done and finding that it's not, so that's always fun too. But, you know, bit by bit, <laughs> hey, you've got a Martian head on this side, but not on this side yet. We'll come back when this is all put together. Okay, so what I want to do now... Oh, Got a Martian head. Now, before we start putting the body together, you notice on the box that there's a couple little jewelry things here that look kind of lit and red. And then I notice on the gun we got some yellow and green and red here. Now, it doesn't really appear they're glowing, but they could be. But you know me. We're going to light that up. Not only are we going to light up those, we're going to put uh, a strip of, uh, of Mama Man Tom's LEDs, uh, the warm ones down in here, which will light him from underneath up his face. We're going to light the gun, and we're going to light the sewer, and the glow coming out of that, and of course we're going to light the lamp. So this will be another lit up model, because that's what I like to do. <laughs> so uh, I need to first uh, be thinking very logically and uh, get in the... Uh, this is his feet, so I want to get an approximate length of the fiber optics and enough of it to be able to run it up to those two little red lights and get them in first before I close this up. Um, what I'm going to do is take a lighter to this, and cut it, and uh, make a lens effect, effect on it. So we're going to get both those in. 
I've already drilled the hole, and how I drill the hole on top of that little bead is uh, I score a little mark first so that the drill won't be dancing all over the place and go straight in, which it did do very, very successfully. And it appears that I <laughs> put in the same one. Okay, I meant to put this one in. So we're going to do this all through the model, uh, through the, and up the arm and all that kind of stuff till uh, I get things where I want them to be. You can see that this drill bit is exactly the right thickness to get this in there. I want this one to be the same length as this one. And we'll have a red LED on that and those will light up. Is it showing? Mm -mm. It's not showing? Let me see over here. Oh, it's because the... There. Turn that up. Okay. So, we're going to do that first. And so here we are. I've got all the fiber optics in. These will come out the palm and go into the gun and come out the buttons. And of course, you've got these two here, which I showed you before. And this is the new one I just added. And that's going to light up the face from underneath. Cool, huh? So all the lighting is in this, in this part of the model, so tomorrow I can take the parts apart and uh, do a light blocking and painting individually of the different sections and put them together. Well, it was a great week. We got all caught up on our orders. We're really, really always glad to get orders from you guys because we love having our work out there. We love having it in your homes where people can see it because that's what it's really for. That's what it's really all about. So every time you guys order something, it's a piece of art we handcraft for you, and we love it. So I was really glad, though, to be able to start the Marsh, Martian, like, I get it mixed up with our title. Our title is Martians Attack SNG, but I'm building the Mars Attacks model, which is going to be used as a prop in SNG. It was really cool to start that. You're going to see more of that next week. Um, it's been brought to my attention that 2001 A Space Odyssey, my very favorite movie in general of all time, the movie that launched my career, that changed my life, and so did that director, Stanley Kubrick, is being re-released on the big screen in the UK. Which comes as a big disappointment because I really wish they'd do that here. I think the public needs a good dose of it. It's a fantastic movie. It has a lot to say. It's an experience. More than anything, it's an experience. And on the coattails of Interstellar, I think it would have been a good thing to do. Maybe they will. Maybe they'll see it does so well over there. But I was very, very, very lucky to have Gary Lockwood here at the studio. Uh, and he even damaged my captain's chair, <laughs> which I've left that way. He got out of it wrong, and there's a big old chip underneath. And But that was actually put there by Gary Lockwood. But it was really cool to meet with one of the people, one of the key players, one of the actors in the movie, and listen to his stories about Kubrick and working on that film. Because I have researched that movie from the time I was in high school uh, and read everything about it, everything about Kubrick, learned everything. I saw the movie over a hundred times easy standing on my head. Uh, and it was just this incredible thrill to have him here. And he was so kind to sign this book, uh, which I know many of you have. And now there's that new one out, which I've got to get. And he signed it right there. And wrote some nice things and this this just so so cool and I just never did thank Gary publicly but Gary it's a real pleasure to meet you and spend time with you and thanks so much for for doing that of course the movie we're talking about if some of you don't know about it because you're very young it's 2001 a space odyssey now this is the book which was and there's controversy about this but to my knowledge this was written after the movie or after the screenplay was written so it's a really great book it's it's slightly different than the movie it explains a lot more um, and of course this is the man if you can find this book this is a great book to read about Stanley Kubrick it's one of the only books out there where this gentleman went and interviewed him at length it's really incredible so probably one of the greatest filmmakers that ever lived so I wanted to talk about that. So if you don't have never seen 2001, uh, especially if you've seen Interstellar and never seen 2001, go see it. It's really, really, really something. 
So that's going to end it for us this week, and we're going to be back next week with all kinds of great stuff pertaining to our movie. And also we're going to be building uh, the big 66-inch scratch-built Enterprise for uh, Museum of Science Fiction. We'll see you next week. <laughs>